HTC Recharged. We're about to get into our second last match of the day, Zele versus Kolemoen. And uh, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, Kolemoen, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I think it's Kolemoen. Like, I, I couldn't find that much information about him. Uh, he is ranked on Gospel Gamers as an international player. And uh, he played in Via Game House Cup Qualifier. That's uh, everything yep. we know about him at the moment. He is one of the qualifiers for this tournament. And uh, Zele has uh, obviously been invited. You guys have seen quite a bit of him on Team Archon, uh, doing pretty well overall. Crushing some of the big names in tournaments every now and then. And uh, well, he's got to get through Kolomoyan for uh, that to happen. Uh, the players are bringing um, Hunter, Warlock, Warrior from Zele. And Kolomoyan is have uh, Mage, Paladin, Warrior. Oh man, so similar to the ECOP uh, situation where Zale is bringing mm -hmm. the, the most solid and known archetypes and uh, Colin Moen is bringing the Paladin. I believe this is the Paladin we've seen before from Bunny Muffins. Mm -hmm. Aggressive one. Uh, Mage, I would say this is aggressive as well. Uh, as well. Like most of the qualified players, they tend to play aggro decks. Hmm. That's kind of true actually. Yeah, I didn't really notice that. Um... But on the other hand, most of the mages have been freeze. So how do you That's... weigh that in? Yeah, but this is a, a very difficult deck to play. Um, but mm -hmm. as I said, we don't know much about Colin Moen, so maybe he is actually a very experienced Hearthstone player and just didn't have a chance to go through. And this is his big moment to shine here at HTC Recharge. It's absolutely possible. Now, um, Paladin, I'm always... I'm always like hoping, I'm always like a little bit optimistic that maybe, maybe just this time someone will bring like a mid-range or a control paladin deck. But what really happened to it? Like it seemed like people who were playing a lot of those decks not too long ago. Was it like Imp Gang Boss that just changed everything or was it Grim Patron as well? Or, you know, what was the big hit you think? I think like the, the because the meta game changed. There's more combo decks, as you said. There's Emperor Tori Sun. Uh, Paladin just is not enough. Uh, also, those bad versus Rogue. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Hunter is pretty good versus Paladin as well. So Handlock, yeah. like all those decks are actually better than mid range when you think about it. And oh, no, I think I think Handlock gets crushed by Paladin, doesn't it? Paladin's yeah. like the counter to Handlock against mid range against counter the uh, counter Paladin. Also, right, um, but. Um, I don't think so. Like, also, whoever you ask, if you had like a big equality, maybe, but most of the times, Handlock was able. Like, it seems like a bad matchup uh, for mm -hmm. Paladin. Um, Paladin seems like a bad matchup for Handlock, but overall, you still win with those cards. Like, um, you have the clears, uh, yeah. you have life gain. So, in the end, Handlock was the right versus Paladin. And if your supposedly best matchup is actually not that good for you, then you probably drop the deck. And, uh, but mostly combo decks, like Patron, obviously, just attacking yeah. your dudes. A little bit rough. Well, the players are about to head into their game here. Uh, we do know that Zele is queuing up with Hunter, while Kolemoen is hitting it up with Warlock. Um, this is uh, this is usually like a pretty back and forth, usually Faber and Hunter, but really the flavor matters a lot. Um, some of those, some of the Zoo Warlock decks tend to do pretty well against Hunter these days, but uh, it is a lot of back and forth, and I think we've seen a lot of that so far in the tournament. Hunter wins some, Warlock wins some. Not not too big of a, of a not not too much of a one-sided matchup. Yeah, it's mostly close to 50-50. Like some of the some of the matchups, there is a small favor, but tops uh, five percent, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we will get to see uh, here what's going on pretty soon. Again, so again, we apologize that we often end up missing the first few turns of the uh, of the match because of the ongoing spectator uh, problems. Um, you know, it's just something that often gets screwed up with the clients when there's a new patch. And right now, uh, there's always like a new patch with Tavern Brawl in the system. But, but on the other seems... hand, who wants to see the mulligan? People wants to see the game. Actually, I think when people like actually train to like do well in ladder, the mulligan is maybe the most important part. Come on, the game. The game is the okay. I want to see. Mulligan. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, we're we're in here. Looks like it's uh, probably a handlock. Like the the dragon deck doesn't run ancient watchers, does it? 
uh, it does not run. So the Ancient Watcher is um, giving away a handlock deck. Mm -hmm. There is um, is this a midrange from Zalei? We've seen so many midrange hunters that I'm just assuming it's midrange. Probably, but I think we've seen Lothed in um, even like the faster ones. Yeah, there's definitely possible to run Lothed in the faster ones. All right, so <clears throat> for how what do we got? Col Colmoan. 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 Okay, that's good. It could it could be like Colemon or something like that. I don't know. We'd have to ask him. Colemon. 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 Okay. I don't know. That's that's right. I like the tap. Uh, the hand wasn't that impressive, and you still have those Twilight Tricks. Oh, actually, Twilight Trick into Sludge Bulge is pretty good, but you have a possibility to tap. There's not that much damage coming from the Haunted Creeper, so you want that extra card. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, not too much play there. Try to clear the board. Try to push for your own damage as the Hunter. Yeah, so like this matchup is uh, a bit awkward if you're playing Midrange Hunter. Um, you, you definitely don't want to see Twilight Tricks that early. You don't want to see Giants, unless you have that Owl. So with Owl at least, you will be able to kill it, but... I think the Owl is, is just fine here. Juggler first and Owl, maybe just get a free kill. Yeah. And now I think I'll actually maybe kill it with a weapon? To ensure that the beast will stay on board if there's Mortal Coil. Mm -hmm. Um, again, I don't think there's much play here. Like, uh, just the Belcher seems like a pretty clear one. I guess you could play the other Drake and Mortal Coil. What do you think about that? Yeah, I was thinking about it because uh, I want to use the Coil, and if you go Belcher and he's well, the risk of silencing is actually pretty low because we've seen just one owl. So mm -hmm. maybe Belcher, because because we've seen Owl, Belcher will be a better play. But Twilight Drake Mortal Coil is definitely fine. Uh, you'll be taking how much damage? 6, 8, 10. And you have the Molten Giants. You have the Healbot. Yeah, you just need to draw into a Taunt Activator. Oh, wow, I have two Molten Giants. This is, this is better if you consider Hunt Master. And he, uh, there is a Hunt Master, and he definitely did consider it. Mm. All right, so for Zalei, uh, well, all is gone. You can't really hunt master anything, so... I think an Animal Companion turn is fine. It, it usually sets up a fairly efficient play. You can get a hero power down. You kind of play into Molten Giant with that, but, I mean, what else can you really do? I definitely I think... like keeping the Lothab, not playing Lothab, just keeping the Lothab for the final turn. Like, the moment yeah. where you know, okay, I'm going to kill him in those two turns. Yeah. And I think if you get like a, a Huffer or a, maybe a Leoc, you can consider killing the Drake. Mm, if you get a Huffer, how much damage will be? Nice. Goes to Lothip. All right. Well, Animal Companion, if you get a Huffer, is a lot of damage. And uh, it seems like at this point, he can't really play around Molten Giants. Well, he is playing around Molten Giants by doing this amount of damage. Yeah, 15 is a pretty good spot where um, you can't really play Molten Giants too effectively. So if you play Healbots, you attack into the Juggler. There is a... Is, what, what is the secret, by the way? Uh, I didn't... Uh, I didn't actually pay too much attention. I was dealing with some something earlier. Might be so I missed, I missed some of this game, unfortunately. I'm sorry about that. Um, he is certainly playing as if it's freezing, which uh, tends to be the correct uh, way to play this game. But uh, it feels a little bit helpless. That difference in trap makes quite a big difference in this matchup. If you don't get that taunt activator to bounce back a second time, and you have to actually bounce back a real minion, the tempo swing is just enormous. Yeah, that's certainly true. So I don't see any lethal possibility, he, even if he gets a huffer. If he gets uh, a Leoc, not really as well. Trying to land that knife. Huffer. Oh, it's a Huffer. So it's 12 points of damage. Yep, two off lethal. 
Oh man, I guess you go for it. Why not? Sometimes there are no molten giants and no heal bots. Like molten giants and, and a heal bot. Sometimes and there's heal. two molten giants and a heal bot. Double heal bot. Oh man, if he got a um, uh, Sun Fury. Sun Fury, yeah, it would have been absolutely sick. There's like almost no recovery for the hunter if he got that. Well, actually, uh, at this point, I think he's is he dead anyway? Like he can't clear the board, and there if there if that's the freezing trap. The double molten heal bot and he's dead after that. There's no Tom Giver. He's dead to hero power. So that was actually yeah. a very excellent uh, play by Zalei the last two turns. He would need like um Earthen Ring Farce here to Shadow Flame. If he uses a Shadow Flame, he's dead, yeah. Wow. That was uh, really impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only chance he had there was if that trap was misdirect or explosive. But so, that I mean, you obviously go for it. I mean, it could be. It, there's there's some chance that it is. It's just, uh, yeah, it didn't end up being the case, and, well, what can you do? It seems like that all started on turn 5 when he played that Lothab. Basically, mm -hmm. he took some time to calculate what is the scenario that was going to happen, and um, decided to play Lothab. He got Huffer, obviously, from the Animal Companion that, uh, that helped. But uh, still, he was in a very good position to just take the game. Yeah, yeah. had he got the uh, the Huffer on that turn instead of the Loth, he would have pushed for six more damage. And he basically would have forced out Molten Giants at a time where he couldn't handle them. Instead, the Molten Giant push was just awkward enough that it really wasn't effective at all. True. Excuse me. So the players, uh, players are... Uh, Zele is up one game. The players are heading into their second game now. Um, I believe it's going to be uh, Mage versus Warlock. And uh, we will get to that in a second, just to make sure that uh, the footage is perfect and that we're not dealing with any spectator problems. Um, okay, spoiler, it's Freeze Mage. I spoiled <laughs> okay. it. I wanted to say that as well. I was just holding my breath. Yeah. We don't know what Warlock that is, though. I'm really glad it is Freeze Mage. It feels like uh, every time I watch uh, Freeze Mage play, I kind of learn something. It's just a very complicated deck, and uh, it's not—it's not that simple to start learning. So most people don't even bother like trying to learn. That's true, and it's like different level of skill than Grim Patron because Patron is difficult, but when you misplay, you're often not punished. You just miss lethal, and then you have lethal next turn. And uh, in Freeze Mage, you make a misplay, you're dead. Like one misstep, and you're basically dead. Yeah. So the very difficult deck to play and uh, interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. Okay, he goes for the ping. And yeah, the Doomsayer seems pretty bad. This hand overall seems pretty bad. Yeah, there's no draw. Uh, he has some AoEs, but they are pretty late. So he needs to he needs to draw into something. Doomsayer on free might be an option. I hope that you just clear it and there is no way that Doomsayer will die. Uh, the Acolyte seems pretty fitting here. Uh, it doesn't die straight out to anything on the board, so you might get that extra attack, uh, that extra card, I mean. And that, that is a pretty big deal. Oh man, is it a 2 or is it a 4? It's a 4. Solid. Uh -oh. Actually, I think the play here is to ping the Imp Gang boss to deny any more creatures from being being played. <laughs> That's pretty smart, yeah. Goodbye, B. Um, if you... Can you, or, or, or no, actually, maybe pinging the um, the haunted creeper. That's really similar, actually. But yeah, it's better it, because then you can you can ward clear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Overall, I think this matchup is bad for Zoo. Um, you have some tricks, like you have some defrauded minions, like Void Caller, but mm -hmm. overall, I think Freeze Mage is in a good shape. How much damage is there next turn? If you ping the the creeper. It's eight. That's fine. Yeah, it's nothing really. Okay, it's <laughs> just ping and pass. Three, six. And I wants to absorb seven with the Doomsayer, but I feel like this will get power overwhelmed. But then he can ping the uh the yep, gang boss. <laughs> I think it's fine, it's like almost like ice barrier. Yeah. Just stall out. All the mage is really trying to do is extend the game to where 
there are more mana crystals involved in each turn. And he has a hand that uh, will enable him to do it. Coin mm -hmm. Blizzard next turn, then Blizzard and Flame Strike. You think he'll Blizzard next turn? I think he'll draw next turn. Uh, depends what still happens with the board. I think he actually played the Doomsayer just so he could draw next turn, because the Doomsayer feels a bit optional to me. So if there is a, a power of overwhelming, Doomsayer dies. Yeah. What else can you what else can you play? You can't you can't you still play can't play anything. Yeah. And the mage can ping your imp gang boss to again deny your next play. This is actually yeah, this is actually pretty crazy. So the the implosion for four was actually a liability. Yeah. Because he hit four, it was bad for it. See, Blizzard's a genius. When you implosion for four, it's bad. For the first time ever in the history of the game. Balanced card. <laughs> yeah, it's balanced. Totally balanced. Oh no, he doesn't want to go for the Blizzard. Okay. I feel like he could have held out more. Like he just saw a wasted power of a well. Wow. I mean, isn't it okay if your opponent wastes another one? Well, it saves you. It saves you some some damage if you Blizzard. Oh, there you go. The the Blizzard bug is not fixed. It does damage and then freezes the minions, even if it didn't hit it. Um, you know, if you like speak in magic terms with a stack, it's like it hits with damage. It's like so a two-stack two spell. Yeah, it's like basically imp goes in the stack and then imp resolves first and then freeze resolves. But it might be a bug still. Well, they fixed a lot of the other interactions, like with swipe, so I feel it probably is. Yeah, it seems like a bug. All right, so seeing the void color, you, you like freeze mage doesn't like void color that much. There is always a possibility of uh, Morganis for free, Doomguard for free, Doomguard mm -hmm. without drawback, and you want to kill it eventually. There's a frozen Spell Nova and Ice Barrier. Oh, barrier is nice. Just throw up the barrier. Get another turn. Just get to the combos. And he has a lot of burst actually. With double yes, fireball. He does. Well, it's also got flame strike, that's not terrible. It's true. Well basically it seems like it's it's really good for the freeze mage. You have the, the tools to stall and you have parts of the combo. Alright, well, here you kind of want to play that Sea Giant, but do you play it with the Void Callers? Or Void Walkers, sorry. You Man, might... I can never get that right. The Void Brothers. The Blue Void, void, void Bros. Yeah. So you, you play the Void Walkers because you want to have a Surgeon Doomguard? Yeah, but if you do that, you can't actually play Doomguard. Uh, well, so you like you play with double void walker, you play this giant, and then if there is a flame strike, you will get the doom burn, I believe. Unless there is a tricky defraud mechanic there, like whether maybe if like haunted creeper. No, but there will be enough uh, enough. Yeah, it'll, it'll it'll work. It'll work. It makes it so flame strike is not a great option, but it makes it so doomsayer works for sure. Yeah. All right, so now we face the full board. If you flame strike, what happens? You get a couple of spiders. You might get a demon, and you get pretty messed up. You might actually die if you flame strike. Hmm. You would not get the imp, at least. Yeah, because the the board is full, but still, that would be really dangerous. You can ice lance the sea giant. giant. Yeah. yeah. To prepare for flame strike next turn. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, that's why freeze mage is so difficult. That single de decision might might have been game changing. Yeah. Whoa. That's a card. So that would be a big creature, and you can get free doom guard. I think I would actually absorb a Void Walker, just to add three health on it. So play Void Walker and then absorb both brothers, like Caller yeah, and Walker. Exactly. Yeah, makes sense. I don't think the taunt adds anything, and they still add. They still just do one damage on the board. I certainly agree. That would be much better. 
seven nine will be definitely hard to deal with. Seven six is manageable. Oh man, that top deck. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was... that is such a top deck. Holy cow! That's exactly what he needed. And now denied the the Void Walker play. Void yeah. Walker doesn't matter now. He cycles a uh, loot hoarder. All right, so it seems really one sided at this point. So is there a silence maybe? Yeah, Zelia just has to tap into a silence. There's really no other option. Zul normally plays one Iron Beak. If you want to tack, maybe two, but one is... All right, AJ, I guess you pass. Well, right. you can play the Void Caller if you want to lead in with like a bigger turn next turn. I probably prefer to play Void Caller next turn. Um, normally, just uh, not lose it here. M. Gangboss will not change that much, I believe, or but he is considering it. Because Freeze Mage is already at 13. Yeah. And you have to win. It's not like he's going to lose life throughout the turns. Alright, so Doomsayer clearing the board. And there is a Frostbolt, so actually, now Alexstrasza into lethal next turn. Yep. And Zele is basically pressured to kill Kalamon, or perhaps play a Lotheb. If you look at Mulganis, still doesn't really help because then he's dead to Alex Straza Fireball. Bane of Doom. Not good enough though. An hour four! Zelay is so lucky. <laughs> yeah, but he's dead here just to, just the fireballs. He's dead. So, so you, you can't really expect to uh to live here. That was a pretty sick game, but uh, most of it did come down to that Doomsayer top deck. Um, I think I think some of the uh, plays were pretty clever with just filling up the board. I think he could have abused that another turn, and I would have loved to see that. But um, still pretty good stuff, and uh, in the end, the uh, very, very clutch final Doomsayer in the deck draw makes it all happen. Certainly. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, good play from Cole Moen. And, you know, from qualified players, you never know what to expect, like, because you don't know the guys. But maybe this is his tournament. He brought Freeze Mage, which is a good choice. He played it really well. And right now he has, um, he's piloting a Warlock to, to face LA. Mm -hmm. What um, is the so first deck we've seen? That was a Handlock, right? Yes. So it's it's Handlock versus Zulok, and then probably Ebola Pally versus probably Patron Warrior. Well, actually, Crip, after seeing Freeze Mage and Handlock, I would say this Paladin might be mid-range. Might be mid-range? That's, that's a pretty good guess, actually, yeah. It does seem in line with the other two decks. Um, and there is some strategy to bringing three of the exact same deck to a tournament. We won't find out in this case, though. The uh, next classes they have queued in with, uh, we have uh, Colomun on uh, Handlock and Zele on what is probably going to end up being a Patron Warrior, as we'll see in a second. Yeah, that's a very strong deck. And uh, this matchup is really weird. Like, most of the people say Handlock has an edge mm -hmm. versus um, versus Green Patron, because you set out those big taunts. And, um, and you got the clears. Yeah, exactly. But I've seen Green Patron winning so many times versus Handlock. It's just... You have executes for some of the taunts, and the more minions on board, the better the frottings. So you, yeah. so you just uh, start, try to draw cards early, drop Torison, win with combos. All right. Well, we're in the game here. Uh, Zelle has an all right hand. Uh, not much pressure in the early game, but he's got the draw potential, and he's got a lot of activators. So uh, just one or two good cards can really make this pretty good hand into a great one. As far as the handlock, the zombie chow really adds nothing in this matchup, except just another card in hand. Uh, but the drake is good. Some removal is good. Yeah, the fact that he has Ancient Watcher and some Fury as well. Um, he would like to have an hour drake or maybe the giant. For Zale, he will be looking at... The Battle Rage is one of the key cards he has, but he will be looking for Frotting, obviously, Warsong. Like, those cards win this match. Torison. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever you can get. Like, one time I think I've seen a match where the player, the patron player, actually hard-casted patron. Like, 
he went into a small patron board because he had double patron. So he went for a small patron that baited out removal and then he unleashed patrons again without even charging. And Warlock didn't have anything to deal with that and, he, and Warlock lost. Basically, kind of like War of Attrition. Do you have removal two times in a row to deal with my board? Mm -hmm. But I would not advise the strategy. The best strategy is Warsong, Frauding, get those executes on big targets and just kill Warlock in one turn. Yeah, we saw a game uh, just earlier in the tournament where um, two Frothings ended up doing, I think it was 34 damage from nothing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that happens. That's the deck. That's second the combo. Twilight. Uh, second Twilight. Is that good enough? I feel like Mortal Coil is pretty nice here. Uh, I think you want Twilights. You basically want to pressure Patron into a defensive position. Mm -hmm. So that he has to use uh, Executes early. And uh, if he doesn't have the Executes, just deal damage. In the beginning, I think it's kind of like a tempo battle. Whoever deals more damage, and uh, then Handlock tries to stabilize, and Patron tries to combo up. So for Zalei, he is in an awkward spot, because Battle Rage is not that great. You only throw one card, and you want to draw these two. You can maybe use Death Spite and attack into Twilight Drake to prepare it for the kill next turn. Because you have double Death Spite, mm -hmm. and you will be able to get a better, better Battle Rage. Yeah. Sometimes... At, at two life, you need to use another card to kill it. Yeah. Also, sometimes it's so weird for Warrior, because if you are undamaged, you can't, you can't really gain armor. Like, gaining armor is bad if you're undamaged. When you're, mm -hmm. you have at least one point of damage, you're fine. You can get as much armor as, as you want. What do you think about double Mortal Coil, double Dark Bomb? That seems unusual these days. That's definitely unusual. Um, but surprise is good. I guess we've seen most of the decks that actually advanced to tomorrow uh, were tricky, personal, customized decks. Mm -hmm. It works. So maybe a second Dark Bomb. Second Dark Bomb is definitely something I would not expect from Handlock. And it's good versus Patrons, possibly. Like, you know, if you if you can't if you can't have a clear. And if you want to kill some patients one by one, you might use it. Alright. Well, uh, the three health is actually kind of bad for um, uh, for Kalama in here because the, the slam puts it in range. But... Actually, is there a slam there? I really thought there was. No, no slam. No, I guess there isn't. Wow. I don't know why uh, I'm mistaken there. Okay. Well then. So, uh, with no slam... Acolyte time? What's up? Acolyte time? Yeah, certainly. I'm just thinking of your battle rage this turn as well. Um, you might not, there's a lot of cards. You don't want to overdraw. So, if you Acolyte kill something with your weapon attack, you will be... How many cards there is now? Eight. So, you'll be back at eight. You back at 8, and then if you battle rage, you go to you 10, 10, so you can't really battle rage this turn. You basically have to get an execute from this, and if you do, you can battle rage and then coin the execute to go back down to 8. So if this draws execute, he can do it. Yeah, okay. Okay, no execute, but ghoul is good as well. And he has a whirlwind, he has a second death spite, so he's not afraid of losing whirlwind effects. Call him Moen. He still has some board, so even though the warrior is drawn a lot, it's still going to be kind of back and forth for a few turns. Uh, the main issue is, like with the Grim Patron drawn, you know, just a crazy amount of cards, uh, usually this game ends with uh, really, really angry frothings. That giant was really good here. And, um,. What he might be thinking is that Colin Mon actually has a lot of damage potential because he has double Dark Bomb. Uh, he will not be able to go for the goal this turn yet, so I would not use the Dark Bomb. I would just go with the with an 8-8, eight, eight, I think. Mm. Looks like he really just wants to limit the draw. That's a good option as well. Just clear and, uh, and build up a board. But uh, there wasn't a possibility to, to go uh, into aggression as well. Like you want to use those early turns before you go into turn 8, where 
fraud, double frauding or after Torison, it's it's more possible to be aggressive before the Torison turn. You know, the mountain, uh, the mountain giant seems uh, a little bit awkward now, though. I think the only way he's getting played is uh, if not much of a board and maybe a mortal coil target arises. He might do like a tap mortal coil mountain giant play, but other than that, I don't really see it. I think he will try to set up a Ragnaros kill. So, uh, because that's so much damage. Ragnaros, Dark Bomb. And this kind of warrior doesn't normally gain that much life. The best life gain is uh, Patient Board plus Armor Smith. There is a Shield Block though. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, the Drake is at 1 HP, so you know it's dying next turn no matter what. It seems fair to hit the armor smith here yeah i think that's definitely de decent um so you might trade here you can play the mountain giant i'm thinking do i do i want to tap the ancient watcher on one point and one hand is good because then death spy will have to attack into it so four more damage but then if there is coin... don't you want to uh taunt on the mountain oh yeah that's much better well, he chose to tap anyway, so I'm okay with it still. I mean, it's your only taunt activator right now. You might need it for uh, something good. I don't like having Sun Fury that much on the board because it's always possible that some patrons will run into it. Yeah. And that's another minion for the frauding combo. I'm looking good for Colemon. Double shield block draws. Oh man, maybe he's running a shield slam as well. There is the Torison, but one mana off. No execute, no shield slam. I just can't believe it that I'm considering shield slam in this deck. This is so unusual. Well, we saw it in an earlier deck, and you also mentioned that Tiddler, as well as maybe some other players, oh, there's execute, were running shield blocks. Um, did those decks run shield slams as well, do you recall? So the Tiddler version only run some life gain, but the combo, um, let's say the, the mixture that Nairia was playing, those decks are definitely running cards like Shield Slam. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a Control Warrior plus the combo. Um, this version seems like standard combo plus Shield Block. So I would assume there is no Shield Slam, but Zalai can surprise me. Well, Ragnaros comes down after seeing double Shield Block, you have to imagine the cards are cut probably include big game. And there's no big game, but there's exec another execute and an activator. Both. Well, the activator isn't very good, is the thing. Yeah, you don't want to cast that. But there's no war song, and I've seen many patrons lose to handlock without the war song draw. Like you need charge. Mm -hmm. I sometimes even keep war song in my opening hand versus handlock because it's so important. Yeah, this sucks. Um, you might go for patron board and hope there is no execute. So, uh, not, not like like no uh, AOE. So, patron whirlwinds. You can do Smile. patron armor smith whirlwind and then execute coin. Or, sorry, whirlwind coin execute. Yeah. Okay, he's keeping the patrons here. Is there worth some pickup? I think pick up another some... execute and uh, an inner rage, though. That's kind of a big deal for the Grim Patron activators. But yeah, still no charge yet. Yeah, without Warsong, he will not have enough power to go through. Okay, so um, Cole Moen dealt a lot of damage. Six, nine, cards. Nine cards. He can still tap. He'll be at seven. He can play Belcher and Watcher, but at this moment you're um, actually conscious about green patrons. Like whenever you play a minion that will have uh, one or two attack, you will spawn additional patrons. And such Belcher is one of those cards that mm -hmm. spawns the one two, and that's additional patron. Yeah, seems good, but sometimes isn't. I think for the two mana, you may consider just dark bombing here, though. 
I think that's a very good suggestion. Because if you face a patron outburst, Armor Smith will gain a lot of health. Mm -hmm. Alright, there goes the Watcher. Let's see if Zilla can finally draw the Warsong Commander. And he cannot. Nope. Um, this is not too bad either, though. But, I mean, this play without charge just, you know, draws you the rest of the deck and you can just lose the game to a Hellfire. So it doesn't seem like the, the most ideal way to play it through. Maybe you just drop the Acolyte and Torison and pass. Like Actually, yeah, that seems fine. You've seen so much damage from the Warlock. You've seen one Dark Bomb, you've seen Ragnaros. Well, that's, that's enough, I guess. The only question is, like, do you want to enrage the Acolyte, maybe, to cycle enrage? Do you feel like enrage is needed to, to win the game, or is it just... I think I, I would actually use enrage on Acolyte, maybe, uh, just to get another card and reduce the cost of another card. If I get, like, another Frothing or Warsong, mm. that would be better. Well, Zele does not end up going with that play. He, uh, he doesn't really, like, we've seen some different style of play for the Grim Patron. We saw in our opening game uh, how, um, oh man, was it Bunny Muffins, I believe? Bunny yeah, Muffins, Muffins was playing his where he just didn't really care about uh, dropping combo pieces. He just wanted to draw a lot of cards. And I think, I think we actually saw him win that game because of that. Yeah. Uh, where Zele is playing, uh, you know, very conservative with the card draw and more so with uh, just building board. Yeah, that's certainly true. Like, the playstyles really come out um, when, when we see those guys in tournaments. Also, small changes in the decks, like Nairia playing Shield Blocks, Shield Maiden, Shield Slam, uh, Zele playing double Shield Block, Bunny Muffin's not playing them at all. Some people play Ghoul, some people don't play Ghoul. I think, though, more, more and more people play the ghoul nowadays, and Slam also becoming a, a staple card. Alright, so building up a big board. A one two might be annoying if there's a war song, but if there's no war song, Zalei is in trouble. And Battle Rage. He's got and... two of them now, doesn't he? Uh, that's... No, 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 no that's the second one. He, can't... Yeah, yeah. he used one before. Yeah, he used it. I wonder how many cards he has left in the deck, as a lay, that is. Mm. Well, he can probably draw all of them if he wants. Okay, Valorish for free. He needs one of the Warsong Commanders. There is the first one. A real big problem for him is that he lost um, the Executes. Like, right now he will have to deal damage to this 4-5 and a 5-5 taunt. Yeah, that's that's a lot of damage he has to give up, and uh, that's kind of a problem. Normally, how you beat up these big taunts is by uh, pushing for frothings and executes in the same turn, and he's not really able to do that. What he can maybe possibly do is if he gets a big turn where he can play Warsong, Frothing, Patron, then use the Whirlwind, get more minions on board, trade all the Patrons into the taunts, and then win with one Frothing attack. He's also missing a Death Spite, I believe. We've only seen one this game. Um, I think he used both of them, actually. He had, really? Yeah, he had both of them really early. I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that might be the case. Man, this game's going on a while. Um, okay. How much, how much damage is there? This is 7, 8 points of damage with the Silence. That's uh, 4 more, 12. Uh, Defender of Argus. Mm, okay. Well, can you use Shadow Flame? You need Shadow Flame for patrons. Yeah, you can only Shadow Flame for patrons, but it seems pretty good. Oh, this is a Shadow Flame play. Okay. okay he doesn't really care about the armor that he's giving to him. I like it. Just uh, getting rid that that was an additional patron. Sucking it. All right, more healing, more taunts. Sometimes rude. this um, this isn't very good, but with executes down, 
uh, it might be good enough. Yeah, honestly, it, it's looking good for Cold Moan. Okay, okay. What do we have here? Do we have it? Do we have like charge Grim Patron for four mana, frothing for two mana, and just a million patrons clearing this board, and the frothing eventually hitting face? That's his best chance. He can also slam the fro uh, one of the patrons. Okay. Oh man. Big patron turn. It shouldn't be enough, uh, but it's definitely helping him a lot. He will be able to clear the board, I believe. And have that big frotting. Yeah. Uh, I think this is one of those situations where it's just... It's kind of impossible to really do the math. So you just try, because if, if you take too long to think about it, you'll never finish your turn. And uh, actually we can see that he's almost out of cards and he might not be able to attack with the, with the Frotting because Frotting takes so much time. Did he actually attack with the Frotting? Did he win? No, he missed 3 damage though. Oh man, that was close. <laughs> that was actually... Really <laughs> I was like close. watching it and uh, it, it seemed amazing. Okay. Well, he has another round of chargers. Uh, and Kalemwen doesn't really have enough here. Holy cow, what a turn. Yeah, I'm just still amazed. And still not enough time. And he still couldn't complete. Bus. Yeah, he started the turn right off the bat. I, I, I think, like, judging by his way of play, judging by his expression, I feel like he just like, okay, this will probably work. I've been in this situation before, most of the time we make it. <laughs> And if you think too much about it, it won't work because you'll run out of time. And he's still running out of time a little bit. Colin is... Where's Colin I can't see him on the camera. He's lying on the... Uh, his no, it, he's like that guy from Star Trek. He's got that, like, uh, that, like sunglass, you know, strip thing. <laughs> yep. Okay, yeah, I can see it. Oh, man. Choosing Silence. not to heal. Okay. That was pretty ballsy. Um, Do you spot right. evil? Do you spot evil? This is a puzzle. There's... Yeah, I don't think it's much of a puzzle. I actually think you have lethal here. Uh, you take damage, so basically you attack... You have uh... to have lethal here. There's just no way you don't. It's a double patron into giants, two free into, into the giants, and you... I don't know if you, if you play frauding here. So I think what you do is basically attack one, kill Giant with Patrons and Frotting, and then kill Sylvanas with the Warsong and um, the weapon. So you take damage, and then you play Warsong and Patron. And is that enough? Not really. Oh man, okay. So now at least he has a... He Wait, has if this a, takes the Frotting, does he lose? Yeah, if that took the frothing, I think he would have lost. No way to kill the giant there, yeah. I'll probably go for the patron play, but uh, that was that was good as well. Was it? I was. I not... feel like I feel like there was a lethal there. Maybe with a different steal. You have eight mana. So with my play, what will happen, uh, the board will be cleared and Zalei will end up with um, Warsong and... Like he, no, no, he spent four mana on the no mission Venter that did two damage to face when he has an axe in hand. Oh yeah, actually. But he wanted to increase the chances that uh, something bad is actually taken, that Frothing is not getting um, a Sylvana steal. Mm -hmm. That's why he played like that. So if you play... Um, Fiery War Axe, then maybe. Like Fiery War Axe, a, a good steal like this, uh, and then you win. But right now, I think it's over. Oh man. I feel like the play was to um, play out the creatures that you wanted, the axe, and not like a two attack creature. Uh, get Sylvanas to the point where the next hit kills her, and then suicide a small creature and the semi-buffed frothing into the 8-8. Because eight, eight. 
because that would have worked, right? And what do you think about my play? My play was clear the board with what you have and attack Sylvanas with a weapon and then play Warsong, a patron, attack into one minion, get a patron, attack into the second minion, get a patron. So end up with four patrons and one Warsong against one card in Handlock's hand. Oh, just like a board control type of play? Yeah, you basically clear and you have the whole board against one card. If it's uh, Hellfire, you lose. If it's not Hellfire, you possibly win. Okay, yeah. Well, it just goes to show how uh, difficult it is to play that deck in some cases. Uh, even Zele, over just the turn before, he made a miraculous play, which almost led into him winning the game. Uh, it certainly seemed like he was going to win the game from it. Uh, turned out to not quite be the case. Um, Actually, if you would not miss the free damage from Patron, because he missed three points of damage because yeah, of the rule. Exactly. That, would be, that would be it, yeah. But you can't really blame him for that turn. That turn was insane. Like he's, yeah. He spent 90% of the turn making the correct um, you know, sequencing between all those cards. Pretty impressive. He, he just needed like 92% of the turn for, for that to actually be perfect. Also, the last turn um, with Sylvanas, what he did, if Sylvanas would steal the Gnomish Inventor instead of uh, Patron, was, that was lethal as well, right? Because he was missing one damage. Yeah, yeah. So he went for a um, for a lethal situation, a possible RNG lethal situation, which was mm -hmm. also pretty good. All right. Well, it does seem to be uh, a slightly unusual uh, Paladin deck here. While if we take away the Lion Hands, it seems like it might be the Ebola Din. But with Lion Hands, there's absolutely no chance, no way that this is Ebola Paladin. So we are at at the very least looking at a mid-range, and the mid-range shielded mini-bot is absolutely crushing against the uh, Flame It. This, this seems like a very good hand for the mid-range, and certainly a mid-range Paladin. I'm, I'm happy to see one. We've seen an Ebolodin, but... Oh, top deck. Top deck. <laughs> yeah, it is top deck. Okay, so for the zoo, for Zale, this hand... Mm, it's alright. Like, egg is fine, you won't... Had that not happened, it would have been a complete disaster. Now you do and... master uh, anyway. What's that? You do master for battle anyway here. Yeah. No, not so. So, I think overall this matchup is favoring Paladin if he gets a consecration. Mm hmm. If, if there is no Consecration, uh, sometimes Zul goes out of control and you can't stop it, but... I yeah, it usually... It. Sorry. Uh, it usually has to do with, I think, the just the Void Callers and the Eggs. They just provide just too big of a tempo swing. We see the Egg, we see the Activator in hand. Bad things might happen here pretty soon. Oh, Defender of Argus is a nice pickup. Uh, so, Shredder or Argus? That's the question. With the Argus, you might even go face. That would be that's four, five, seven points of damage this turn, and then you have a true silver. So you might actually try going being aggressive. Mm -hmm. And if you go into sh pilot the Shredder, you play into power overwhelming. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to kill the spiders with the two twos. That's uh, that's good as well. Yeah. Kind of like a compromise play. And one, one of the things that uh, Zoo is missing is a board clear. Like right now, the combination of juggler implosion that might happen next turn is uh, one of the best clears that Zoo has. But other than that, no hell fires, no shadow flames. That's why Zoo versus Zoo is so weird, because whoever gets a bigger implosion has that yeah. huge edge. Well, the yeah, Abusive Sergeant seems like a pretty good play here. Um, even if your Abusive dies for free, it's not really that bad. What, what would you need here? As a, as a Zoo or as a Paladin, I think you're in a very good shape. You got the Peacekeeper for the 4-4, four, 2-2, four, two, two, and 2-3 two, into that. Yeah, and you continue doing damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is really going to be one of those games that's, uh, you know, how many imps do you get? Yep, you need to get a very good number and then the knives need to shine because there is a lot of spaces where you don't want the knives to land. Mm -hmm. 
Well, four knives is almost a clear. Unless all four goes to face. Three. That's, That's a fine. kill. That's bad. a miss. Bad. Okay, not bad. It's not terrible. Not terrible at all. Hmm. All right. Well, you gotta kill knife dragon. That's an easy one. I think you go for the free kill on one one. I think you just kill the other one one. That's really how much stuff can you play, and I think the most you can play is a shredder and a dude. Yeah, that's definitely the play. Okay, so uh, it, it, Coleman is in a really good spot here with this Paladin. It seems that he is heading straight to taking the series. What is the card? Like a Void Caller. A, oh my god, he actually got a Void Caller. Crip, look at this play. Yeah, this is a pretty big one. I think the 1-1 one, one hits the Defender of Argus no matter what first. No, not the, not maybe. He gets uh, actually Void Caller into Void Terror, gets a Malganis, and the free free trades into the 4 free. Oh. Oh, man. So you basically get... I uh, missed that. A 6-7, because Void Terror will be a 6-7, you get either Doomguard or Morganis. If you get a Morganis, you get a Morganis, a 6-7, and Imp becomes a 3-3. Free -free. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite plays in the Zoo deck. There is nothing, this is, this is the best play. You either get a free Doomguard or a free Morganis, and a very big creature. What? Did he mi Oh my god, look, what, what did he do? Okay, under wait. Was that the play? Like, I, I, I tried to figure out, was that on purpose? Because he wants more minions on the board? Like, no way. It's not more minions, it's two. He ends with two, no matter what. Yeah. That's still two minions, they just suck more. Do you think he misplayed? And he want to play them in the wrong order? Like, look at Zalei, he's kind of... I don't think he played them in the wrong order, but... I have to say, I like your play a lot more. Well, so no Mulganis this turn. A possible Mulganis or Doomguard from the Void Caller. Mm. Well, he can do True Silver, kill the um, the Void Caller, and then Peace Keep, whatever comes out. Problem is, if there is a Mulganis, you face a 5 5. No, you don't. Oh, yeah, if True Silver, you kill it. That, that's good for sure. Oh man. Yeah, so 1 7 Doomguard is an ultimate dude slayer, but nothing nothing more, for now at least. Mm -hmm. Sends the dude into the Doomguard because he uh, assumes that the, uh, the ghoul is gonna die pretty soon. Azale might have played that combination of cards like Voiter and Void Walker because he uh, Void Caller because he was playing around equality consecration. Because my yeah. play that that's the, the only explanation I have at the moment. Yeah. It's it has to be against the board clear. It just I don't know. Like, if, if his opponent didn't have that, he basically wins. So I think it's just a good spot to try to take the win. True. Well, I would love to see that play. But anyway, right now he has still... Um, Defender of Argus, Doomguard is not that bad at 2-7. But uh, with a Consecration and Ghoul, that's 3 damage to board. So basically, Colomon can clear and uh, and play Pilot Shredder. Um, yeah, he can clear, but he loses his board as well. I think you have to clear because of Morganis. Like, Morganis can always happen, and you don't want to leave uh, Demons on board. Mm-hmm. He might also like uh, just go for face with the um, peacekeeper. Doesn't have to kill Ar Aldor. Uh, like Defender of Argus, he doesn't have to kill it. Just uh, go with Aldor to the face. Yeah, and it's unlikely he'll get punished for that. But at the same time, you know, what's what's the harm? 
He has to do something fast. Wait, so he missed... Probably he missed, missed the attack. Yeah. Okay. Well, Malgana seems pretty good here. It keeps the uh, Imp alive to attack the Peacekeeper. Yeah, Malgana seems like a yellow, um, no brainer because then you follow up with Doomguard. And um, Coleman only has two cards, so what's the possibility of, um, of a BGH? It is possible that there is a BGH, but if there is mm. no, no BGH, you're in a good spot. Feels like we're seeing like questionable plays from both players in these last few turns. That's true. Or like diff different playstyles. Okay, so where do you attack? If you go phase, that thir that's 13. If there is a silence, you're not afraid of dying. You've seen one through silver. Yeah, I like going phase. Like, Paladin is not a class that's going to bring up a lot of burst. Mm hmm. Mm, Dr. Boom is a great card, but not really against Morganis. And what can he possibly get? He might be dead, like if he doesn't get something good from Piloted Shredder. Because Doomguard is 7 points of damage, so that's 16. Okay, after the heal he's not dead. 16, 18. Yeah. Quality, a bit too late. Bane of Doom, wow. Uh, if there is a Doom Guard from Bane of Doom, that should be lethal. That will be 14-23. Yeah, it'd be 7-7-9. Seven, seven, and nine. If there is a Morganis, is that enough? A second Morganis will be plus 2 to Morganis, so it's 11 plus 9. 7 Seven plus 4. That would be 1 off. Another Malganus is 1 off. Okay. Oh man, Zelay somehow is actually stabilizing. There is this, this equality, but... Mm. Well, the equality makes it uh, a game that he can win because he stabilizes with the Belcher for a turn. True. And then he has the true silver to heal a bit. It would have to be on a following turn though. It's not quite enough. Yeah, yeah true. Not this turn. But still, like Vulture will be contesting both of those minions. And Zalei will be forced to sap. So I'm pretty impressive. Actually, this game is amazing. Back and forth from both guys. Mm-hmm. Okay, Zalei, what can you do? He taps. He used most of the good cards already. Oh man, such a bad demon. Hmm. Yeah. But it stops that small bit of pressure from coming his way next turn. Is he gonna go for the double juggle? No, there's no double. There's only one juggle. Yeah, only one juggle. It seems better to not attack. Yeah, that's true. Alright. But then there's like True Silver into Void Walker, kill, clear the board. Wait, then uh, why... Why is he thinking now? Maybe he just rushed into this one. He's thinking into attacking the one too. Yeah, but if he wanted to attack the one too, he should have done it first. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm, you know, he's in a, on the verge of elimination, so he's definitely stressed at the moment. Mm-hmm. Okay. RB Gao actually allows him to play Dr. Boom? Or not? No, no, no. He has to clear anyway, because a uh, single power of Wyoming will be lethal. Like, he wants to be in a situation yeah, that only Doomguard is lethal. Haven't we seen both Doomguards? Uh, we've seen... Uh... Yeah, we've seen both, actually. Because one, yeah, was... one was one was played, one was collared out. That's true. Wow, so what's left? He, he needs to hit a four. No, he's not dead if he hits the other one for two. Do, would you would you go for the yellow four or the, the shielded Miva? Hmm. 
Well, is it likely that he'll leave your creatures up? I feel like YOLO 4 is a bit YOLO. But you will probably win that game. If you hit that one, if, if you hit the small one for two, you'll probably lose that game. If you hit small one for four, can you win? Okay, he's going for the yellow four, and he gets oh it. Oh my god, that's so many fours. You don't? Yeah, actually, for Zelay, it's like every single one is four. Oh my god, it's power warming. What? This is. He's this gonna is win. This is over. Can you somehow survive being being Coleman? Not really. He'll be you'll be at six, so you're basically dead to to this board. Like you kill one of you kill the other, and then the, there's exactly six points of damage. Exactly. Yeah. So you can't do anything. The Zale yeah. is actually oh my god. He went for the risky play and it paid off. Yeah. Okay. That sucks for Coleman. And he played really well. Mm-hmm. This is first time. Fine. This is imp stone, man. Imp stone. One, this is where one ones dominate. Oh, they do somehow. Oh, another power. <laughs> okay, this is just crazy. He's not showing the second one. Makes sense. Kolomon must feel absolutely crushed right now. And now Zalei knows almost every card. Like, not all the cards, but most of the cards he's seen. So mm -hmm. he's coming into the last match knowing a lot about his opponent's deck. And it's also a good matchup for him. I mean, Zele has yet to win with Patron Warrior, and he's up against Paladin. Normally, this, this matchup fav favors Paladin when the Warrior's playing control, but I feel with Grim Patron, like, Paladin is that class that has a really hard time dealing with a Patron board, and we only saw one equality, and... I'd say that there might not be a second one in there. Well, Creep, we talked about it before, and you asked me what was the reason why Paladin disappeared. That's basically yeah. the reason. Okay. <laughs> like, Patron is the reason that Paladin disappeared mm -hmm. in this form. So, uh, that is a tough matchup for Colemoyan. If he wins here, he definitely deserves advance. Oh, man. Well, Zele, both his wins come off of um no actually his last two games his last two games are are both like very weird plays i'd say well we had like some in, different in, ideas but in the yeah. warlock with the with the void color and in the uh in the grim patient game running out of time and then like kind of a weird play i think he actually missed lethal but it was hard to spot to his credit it's not like it's not like, you know, 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. It's like, you need a formula. I think that's kind of like a beauty of Hearthstone. Because you yeah. do have those different approaches and uh, different decisions you can make. Mm -hmm. And I don't think his decisions were necessarily wrong. It was just different lines of play he took. Different gambles. Yeah. Alright, so we can see the Paladin versus Warrior. We know this is the Green Page and we've seen all of the cards because he went to Fatigue to play wow. before. This Paladin hands trash. Yeah. So, what would be your take on this matchup? Like, how would you like to play it out as a Paladin? Well, you have to apply some pressure, and with this hand, it's not happening. Yeah, unfortunately, for Kolemon. Like, mostly when you play versus Patron, you want to, like, against all the combo decks, you want to kill them before they collect the pieces. So, um,. Yeah, you just can't do that here. Like, you don't have the tools. Like, what are you supposed to do? Peacekeeper and Armorsmith? Come on. Also, the AoEs. Like, look at those Consecrations. If he faces the Patrons, the Consecration is killing some Patrons, but spawning another. Yeah. It's kind of like Swipe for Druid. Not really working. In some cases, I've seen it work just when there's a lot of Patrons. You can just uh, cap the number of creatures on board and get the remaining patrons to two and then consecrate. But usually what happens is you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Well, for now, Zelay doesn't have the patron yet, but he has a pretty good hand with, with those draws. Mm -hmm. I mean, he'll be able to draw a lot of cards. That's for sure. The question is, do you play... Um... Yeah, you play the accolade. All right. 
I would enrage Acolyte. I really like enraging Acolyte because if there is a true silver, you lose it. But if there is, a, if you use enrage, you basically cycle it, and you draw one more card. It's not like enrage is that key of a card. It is. Mm -hmm. It is good if you want to like if you draw into patron maybe on five, then you'd like death spite, patron, enrage, attack with death spite, get a board and uh, win the game. But I would value drawing a card more than keeping an enrage. Just a personal preference. Well, Zele is drawing into a lot of card draw here with uh, two battle rages and a slam. It still needs some setup. Or not. Two cards, gimme gimme. He, right. he has the time, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, he can't really do that play again. He's killing the dudes, gaining some armor. Coleman will be finally able to play a decent minion this turn. Alright, well, it looks like a pretty good chance for Sludge Belcher to do something. Because Peacekeeper is not doing much. Well, at, no. at least they're a free free, you know, they're so free. So they will not spawn more patrons. But that yeah, is I guess. I feel like they can do some stuff, usually just cause you to get a favorable trade. True. Okay, when he kills the um, the ghoul with the true silver, just denying some combo potential that Zele might obtain from the death rattle of the ghoul. Here, I think you you can basically death spite, kill the the belcher, and then um, it's like you play death spite, you coin battle rage maybe to draw two more cards and then kill the belcher. If you draw into Patron next turn, you're in a very good position. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, he decides to keep Balleridge for, for later, maybe. Huh. What Zalei wants is like what, Warsong and Borison. Yeah, his Warsongs have been eluding him in the, in the time of need, in the last game at least. That's Looks true. like a typical Shredder dude turn from uh, Kalamon. Solid turn. And he has some reason to not dude. I think at this point you can dude. Uh, maybe in a couple of turns you'll actually stop duding up mm -hmm. because of patrons. All right, there's slam. Provides a very nice death bite. Slam has been uh, kind of like overperforming. It's a card that people have decided to maybe tech in, tech out. But uh, so far, what I've seen has been uh, really great. Yeah, I love it. It's like I've, I've been playing a version of Warrior without Slam, and then I edited it because Show was playing it on stream, and it's a great card. It's removal for aggro, draws you cards. You can slam even your. You can create a patron, so it can be a free damage spell if you use it on your own patron to have another patron spawn. You can use mm -hmm. it on Acolyte, so a lot of, a lot of uses. Very flexible card. All right, well, Zelle is trying to channel all his brain power here for this turn. Uh, I haven't really figured it out. Seems not bad to attack. Maybe just armor up fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Armor up. Oh yes. man, Harrison. Getting rid of Death Bite is always good. But is this. I guess. I mean, yeah, I guess you do it. Because if Zele thinks he wanted to keep the weapon, then it's your initiative to. To take just, it. Yeah, decline that. Okay, this is, this is a good technical play. Um, putting uh, Harrison Jones on that side, if it spawns a doggy or a, a flame tongue totem, he's in position to do more damage, and not attacking with the taunt uh, allows him to uh, take advantage of that. Doesn't end up being the case, but all these small things over time does add up to a couple more wins, so maybe next time. Coleman is really impressive, like, he makes those good calls, he plays difficult decks, and um... Well, he ended up with a really bad matchup in the end, but definitely a player to follow. Mm -hmm. I hope we'll see more of Coleman in the future. And Sorry if you for the chair here, squeaking. What's up? Sorry for the chair squeaking. Oh, no problem. I didn't hear you because the the chair was moving. Yeah. Yeah, I was saying if he wins here, but do you think his chances of winning are actually very high right now? I think I, I will favor Zale a lot. 
in this matchup and in this situation as well. Zalei has everything. Okay. Is he coining a Balrage at this point? Yes. Seems like a... S oh, he's going for even more, more patrons. Four cards. Okay. So somehow with those uh, minions on board, actually Colomon will have a way to clear it. You just um, True Silver, kill one free free with uh, Harrison, kill another with a True Silver, and then mm -hmm. you consecrate. Is there a better way to do that? I don't see it actually. Like, you want to consecrate because it yeah. kills three targets. It's actually pretty funny. I was thinking that Zelia may have made a mistake not popping that extra patron, but if he had six patrons, Colomone could have done the play where. You actually just get them all at two health, cap them on the board, and then consecrate. Yeah, true. Because so I, I think having one less patron was actually better there, which is so weird. I'm hoping that was intentional. Should we give him credit? Uh, yeah, definitely. Why not? Okay. He is an excellent player. Right. And all what's right. funny for me credit. is that this is another time where we see uh, a minion cap actually mattering. Mm hmm. I guess in the freeze mage game, the minion cap did matter a lot, and right now minion cap kind of mattered because mm -hmm. the easier clear if you would go into the another, another patron. Well, a lot of um, combo pieces were uh, used for that that turn to happen, and it didn't really end up doing much. Zelly just kind of redrew the number of cards that he ended up using. He is still not drawing the war song, which is devastating. Yeah. He does have the um, the double frothing and the emperor, but that's still not quite enough. You might maybe go for death by this turn. Okay, fireworks is, is all right because you don't have the war song yet. You might just use fireworks to deal some damage, and that does six damage in the course of two turns. There is no pressure from Paladin. Okay. Double lay on hands, interesting choice. Yeah, that is a bit extreme. I uh, when we discussed this deck, I said this might be the mid range paladin plus. This is kind plus, of what... plus plus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, are we going to see Kultus that as well? I don't know. Probably. Well, not. he hasn't he hasn't played big minions. He's playing double lay on hands, but most of his creatures are like uh, two, three, four, maybe five. It surely runs Tyrion. I guess. Not yet, anyway. Yep. We haven't seen any Tyrions yet. Mm. Okay, so what's the turn? You face Firework, so you're not that afraid of Patron turn yet. You've seen one Patron as well. I guess it's just play on hands. I guess you do have time, and you want more quality plays. That puts you on nine cards. Get a zombie chow, get a lothab. Okay. Seems fine to me. So I think he will not be fast enough. Like to win this game he'll need to gain the board, but still there are executes. The more minions you play, the more punish it punishes you against Patron. Mm -hmm. It seems like an old Unleash the Hounds. Like playing versus the old Unleash the Hounds uh, hunter. You can't play too many minions because because you're punished and you need to to pressure them. This is kind of like a deck design that Blizzard wanted to avoid. I'm surprised Zelly hasn't dropped that Emperor yet. I guess he really wants to hit another combo piece with it. Uh, like Warzone, probably. Because if he hits Warzone, he will be able to double throwing. So he might be thinking like at this point, double throwing Warsong will be the the best possible. He still hasn't drawn it. <laughs> it's literally at the bottom of the deck again. I would really love to see how many cards he has left in this deck. It, it seems it seems like it's thin. Two last cards, double Warsong. Uh, well, Zelle made the play there to um, end up with higher life and no armor, which I think is technically a misplay because it used up all his uh, all his mana anyway. And I wouldn't put it past Coloma to have Alistraza. 
you would guess that there might be another Extraza. Could you really guess much of this? There's two Lay on hands. Uh, yeah, well, but Zale doesn't know that. He's seen only one. He's seen one last last game, and this game he's seen only one as well. Yeah. What do you think this turn is? Like, Lothar plus Spell at the Treader seems right. You can't really kill this. So many board. options, it's hard to really guess anything. Yeah, just any sort of decent board development seems to work. He does go with yours. I think you it's need tough. to play Lothar at least. Uh, because there are so many minions that double throwing Warsong is still a possibility. Oh man! There is the Warsong. It arrives a bit late, but not this turn. No, I think it's good enough because it's, it just sets up a turn where you can set up uh, Death Spite and Emperor, which is like totally crazy. True. Double Warsong finally for him. Okay, so it seems like this will be one to last turn. Can Colemon actually survive? Because the next turn is going to be massive. Come on, Zelay. Yeah, the, the trick is to not play creatures at all from this point on. <laughs> like, no that works cards, out for though? What yeah, do you no, do no cards played. Cards played equals lose here. Yeah. Well, he at least needs to kill those minions somehow. There's no equality. No. I Although, guess he just Peacekeeper. Yeah, but then we know that he's going to die. It's not getting rid of the minion. Each minion is plus to attack for for frotting after the Whirlwind Effect. Well, what does he have for Whirlwind Effects? He has the Whirlwind, he has the Weapon. And the Ghoul. So basically, if, uh, all effects he needs. Three Whirlwind Effects, oh, like the yeah. max. Yeah. So many this minions. Is... As well. This is one of those uh, situations where having 30 life is just 20 too less, too little. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so this was supposed to end like this. Basically, Paladin gives um, Warrior enough time to get all the combo pieces, even though Zalai didn't get the war song for so many turns. Mm. He eventually got it. Now playing minions on board is only going to help Zalai. You look at that heal bot, and you're like, I'm at full health, and I'm going to die next turn. Yeah. Um, it seems okay, though. Oh, wow, look at that. That's a pretty good juggle. So, that's it. That's um, four minions plus... So much damage. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't even want to count it. But it's definitely enough. With three whirlwinds. Like, there's nothing even from Pilot to Shredder that can save. Okay, so you use, use the weapon first, and then you use the casted Whirlwind. Did he just miss some damage? Isn't that Whirlwind free? Oh my god, he missed He missed damage. Wait, actually... That's not even max BM. The, the real question is, will he be able to attack? Because... Uh, <laughs> what if he... What if he sequenced it already? And out comes an explosive sheep. <laughs> that would be pretty sick. Because you can't really afford to wait for all the sequencing. You're right. If, ex if there is an explosive sheep, that would be so funny. Oh my god. That would be the first time I see it in a in Harson history. <laughs> oh. oh. Alright, so Zale takes it. Uh, that's pretty impressive. He was down 0 2. And then. Zalei so shows mercy. Look at that. Doesn't even use that third world in effect. What a, what a merciful way to end there. Paladin unfortunately failed. Mm -hmm. Fortunate for Zalei, obviously. Really well played. He finally got those war songs. Yeah, Zalei was pretty unlucky with the war song draws. Um, but man, what, what a crazy set of games that was. I feel kind of bad, Colomon uh, will not be joining us tomorrow on uh, day two of HTC Recharged. We are not quite there yet though, we still have one spot left to fill and it will be filled by either uh, Nuguri or Forsen, which is our match that is coming up here in a few minutes. Uh, as we see the bracket there, tomorrow we will take these uh, seven plus the next qualified player uh, and we'll get our champion in the end. Do you, have, do you have one? You have one favorite? Someone you're rooting for? Uh, overall or in the next match? Yeah, overall. Overall. Um, all right. So 
All the Cloud9 players are out. We have <laughs> Bunny Muffins, Trump, Asahida, Dog, Garzale, Lothar. I would actually like uh, Trump to win. I think Trump, as, as I said before, Trump deserves to win a tournament and mm -hmm. he, he was performing really well. He is performing really well. So I would like to see Trump win and become yep. the new champion. Okay. I'll follow you up on that. Let's do a Trump. All okay. right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will be back after a few minutes while Naguri and Forsen sit up for the final game of the day. If you guys like what you see uh, in the break, make sure you guys check out the promotion HTC has put out for you guys. They're offering a $50 discount on all their phone products. And you guys can check out what those are in the description below. Stick with us, guys. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>